the purpose of this video is to help the user understand how the program is considering drop uh, caps in terms of punching shear and how the user can model uh, drop caps to get an adequate punching shear check. So we're going to start out and we're going to just build a model. We'll use the floor wizard under the build uh, menu to to construct the model and we'll do a couple of spans in both directions. The span length we're going to make uh, 33 feet. For the slab thickness we'll use 8 inches. Column size we'll use a 20 inch square column. There will be just one floor for this check and we're going to bump up the live load to 100 pounds per square foot uh, so we get some results where we have uh, overstressed conditions for punching shear. So we'll go ahead and say next. Uh, notice the column height here is 10 feet. That's important uh, to know the story height in this case. And we're not going to be looking at the use of post tensioning. We'll turn the post tensioning off for this example. And we'll consider this column here in the middle. Now for this column I'm going to use the build uh, pull down menu structural components and I'm going to add a drop cap. And in the in the program, drop caps and drop panels are considered in a similar way um, when, when it comes to punching shear and just overall analysis. And we'll describe that here in more detail. So for this drop cap, we'll make this drop cap um, 36 inches and we're going to make it a 24 inch cap. So really the purpose of this cap is to um, extend out the location where we might establish critical perimeters. However, in our program, the way that the punching shear is checked is the punching shear first establishes the effective depth of the uh, section. So in this case, because there is a drop cap that's 24 inches thick, the effective depth will be roughly 22 inches. Uh, it's, the, it's, the effect, it's the total depth minus the cover minus one of the bar diameters that that is um, set up in the criteria under the preferred reinforcement size for a two-way slab. So here we'll make this five inch or a number five bar. And so in this case we have a 20 inch column D over two uh, to either face of the column and this is assuming we're using ACI. Other codes are similar um, in, in some respects. We have the column dimension which is 20 inches plus D over two times two which just equals D so we have 42 inches and what that means is that using the effective depth of the cap the program um, calculates a critical section which is roughly located outside the actual plan dimension of the cap that we've modeled and because of that that triggers the program to actually use the effective depth of the slab when it calculates the the resistance of the shear and that means that in this case our our critical section remains the same it's going to be the column uh, face plus d over two times two but now because this falls outside of the cap the program uses the critical uh, or the effective depth of the slab which in this case the slab is eight inches the effective depth is somewhere around six and a half inches so we get a resistance which is far less than what's um, actually there uh, if you consider the cap and, and the user has an, uh, two options, either extend the size of the cap, which again may not be reasonable, may not be practical because we're, we're trying to use the cap as a way to establish a larger area at that support. So what happens uh, is we can model the cap a little bit differently. So we're going to go ahead and run this how, we've, how we have modeled it currently. We'll go first and save the model. and I will uh, mesh the structure. We'll go to FEM, automatic mesh. I'll just use a five in, or a five foot mesh here. We're going to run this um, for the default code. So we'll go to FEM analyze. We'll run it for, this is I believe ACI 2011. And we're just running it for the, the uh, service and strength conditions that the program defaults to. So we'll run that. save that. After we've run the model we're going to go back to FEM and punching, uh, run the punching shear check 
and when we run the punching shirt check we're going to open the support line results toolbar so that we can see the punching shirt outcome so here it actually exceeds code the program shows us this note that the stress ratio exceeds the code and if we look at this it, it um, we look at the column to the left or right these these stress ratios are much uh, less than the one in the middle uh, but they don't even have a drop panel so here we're drawing more moment it's an interior condition we have a high stress ratio because the effective depth of the slab is being used and we can verify that by going to reports single default tabular reports and we're going to go down to punching shear punching shear parameters so we're going to open this word document and we're going to take a look in this case we're looking at column five so we'll go back over here to column five it's an interior condition notice that the effective depth being used is 6.38 and the design length is actually the column uh, the column width plus d over two times two relative to the effective depth so we're not even making a check relative to the cap because that first critical section test fell outside of the cap so this is a very conservative conservative approach it leads to results which um, can sometimes not make sense and and we want to show a workaround on how to approach this so what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a sub level and we're going to model two columns so if I go to my multi-story view and I'll go to a side view of the structure you can see that we really only have one um, one slab uh, generated and everything is referenced off of that one slab what I will do is go into my level assignments and I'm going to modify this the current plane we're going to say is only eight feet tall and the top plane will say is two feet tall we'll say close and now we have something that looks like this so what we will do is move this up so I'm going to use my uh, story manager toolbar in essence I'm just creating a sub level which is actually the depth of the drop panel and I'm going to model a column in lieu of the drop panel so we'll copy this slab to the plane above actually we're just going to move that to the plane above and we're going to copy these columns up so I'll go ahead and copy up I'm going to delete the drop cap that we modeled previously and now we're left with a model that is in reality two stories but these are clear stories there's no slab at the current plane and this in essence is the same model as what we had it's just modeled with two unique levels um, now you'll notice I'm working at the the top plane that's shown here so I'm now going to go into single level mode and at the top plane I'm going to uh, increase the size of this column and this column will become 36 by 36 so we have the right column size for that cap that needs to be checked above the column below and if we look at this we can see let's go back to multi-story view we can see that we have a thickening above the column between the base and the current plane and that's shown right there okay so we're now going to run this model for uh, punching shear again because I've split it now into two levels I need to run the model in multi-story mode so I'll go ahead and uh, remesh the slab I'm in multi-story or full structure mode now versus single level mode and in full structure mode we're going to go back and analyze the structure and once we analyze the structure we we have to be in single level mode to check the punching shear so I'll go back to single level at the top plane and we'll go back and check punching after we check punching we're gonna go back and just look at our results so we can now see that the results here are shown as 0.84 this is a different obviously a different stress uh, ratio 
and that seems a little bit low let's take a look there's something that we missed and I think it was the loading so if I turn the loading back on and the loading on in view I'll, I'll use the blue eyeglasses or select set view items to do that we forgot to um, or I forgot to move the loading up to that upper level so let's do that also so we're gonna go here move the loading to the top plane okay and we'll rerun the model this will give us results that seem more reasonable compared to the previous run we'll go back to single level and run the punching sure check I'll go back to my plan view so we can see these results okay so this this seems more appropriate so we went from 3.1 uh, approximately now down to 1.2 but if we check the results now for this case we're gonna find that um, the the proper critical section and effective depths are being used with reference to now the boundary of the actual drop cap so we're not checking punching inside of the drop cap we're using that again to establish a larger area and now we're only checking it away from the face of the cap so if I go to reports single default tabular punching shear design parameters we can look at column 14 in this case and at column 14 it's an interior condition the effective depth is still 6.38 because it's still checking it in the actual 8 inch slab but the critical design lengths are now proper relative to the 36 inch column and those are 42.4 versus the 26.4 that it was using earlier if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact us at support at adaptsoft.com. Thank you.